Hey ladies and gents, welcome to Kai's DIY. It's the show where I show you how to make really cheap props without robbing your bank. Yeah, that's not funny to joke about. Don't 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 go robbing banks. Yes. Rage, the essence of Dark Souls. Or a really fun and complicated sword fighting game. Filled with creepy creatures, cool weapons, and a unique storyline, Dark Souls has many enraging and cool things. But I had a little help getting into this game when I wanted to try it. And to thank him for that, I decided to make him one of his favorite weapons from the games, the Black Knight Greatsword. Look at that thing, it's like another fusion sword. Here's what you'll need for this project. A pack of floor mat foam, at least 8 feet of 3 quarter inch PVC pipe, scissors and exacto knives, sharpie, painter's tape, sandpaper and sanding sponges, a roll of 2 millimeter foam, contact cement, a small dispensable roller set, a roll of hockey tape, and a 12 inch long 3 quarter inch hex bolt. As with every prop I've made on this channel, I always start off with the template. To get the size and length right, I use newspaper. Be sure to double check measurements, because I ended up messing up my template, making the shape a little... awkward. So I shifted the newspaper template down to get the shape right when tracing it on the two poster boards. These two odd points are supposed to be in the middle. After cutting out my new template, I unpackaged the foam floor mats and laid down the template on the connected mats, measuring how wide and how tall I need for the sword. I cut the mats down to size and tried sanding down the side of the mat with the texture off. This will help the mats stick better. After that, I use contact cement in the connecting edges of each of the mats that I will connect together. I use the dispensable roller set to spread contact cement down on the faces of the mats. I sandwiched three layers of foam together with the smooth surfaces outward. I let the contact cement set up for about two hours. Then I traced the template on top of it and cut it out with my bandsaw. Once it was cut out, I sanded the side smooth. This isn't exactly necessary, but this will make the cutting edge of the sword smoother for later. Then I drew on the cutting edge of the sword. Toward the top, I measured about an inch and a half of room. Toward the middle, it got smaller, about an inch. And the bottom starts at two inches. I also marked the middle point of the cutting edge by setting my marker on a scrap piece of foam. Now to cut the angles on the sword. I'm going to cut them by hand. Make sure to keep your knife sharp because foam dulls it pretty quickly. I recommend a sharpening stone to do this. Spraying it with water, then dragging the angle of the knife along the stone will sharpen it the fastest. Do it to both sides to fully sharpen it. I made sure to cut off less than I need to and go slowly to prevent any huge mistakes. Then I'll go back in again and cut closer to the center. Now this sword is supposed to be old and medieval, yet the cutting edges are super smooth. Yeah, I don't get it either. I waited until I was done sanding to cut out the decorative side points. Once done, I sanded the cutting edges smooth. I missed some areas and went back in with my Dremel and a sanding bit. Now if you don't have any of these tools, that's completely fine. You can use sandpaper, but it'll take a little longer. Ah! Using the Dremel makes the surface fuzzy and not that appealing. To clear it up, I used some sandpaper and sanding sponges. Then I cut out those side points by first cutting the bevel, then angling the point. Then more sanding. Now to cut down the PVC. I wasn't sure how long I wanted to make it at first. I think the overall length of the sword is 6 feet, and I made the handle about 12 to 13 inches, but made sure to keep some extra pipe and decorate it before cutting it down to the right size. So I decided to mark it down and cut at 79 inches. This will help fix this problem. I marked the middle of the sword from top to bottom and drew lines where I can cut to fit the pipe. After cutting out the middle, um, huh, this gives me an idea for a prop. What do you guys think? 
Before gluing in the pipe, sand down the surface for a better grip. Unfortunately, I forgot to do that, but I haven't had any problems with it so far. Using more contact cement, I glued in the pipe. Be sure it rests in the exact middle of the thickness of the sword, otherwise you'll need some 5mm foam to fill in the surface like I did. Now to cover that unattractive surface. I unrolled the foam and traced the template twice on it, cut them out, and glue them on both sides. Then I cut off the excess foam hanging over the cutting edges, then sand to blend it in. Now I have to make that decorative cross guard. Once again, I used newspaper to make a template by tracing the bottom of the sword on it. I made two templates. One will go over the sword, and the other is a cross guard that will attach to the bottom of the first piece. I traced them onto poster board, cut them out, and traced them onto floor mat foam. Huh. This one looks familiar. Sorry, I had to play with that for a little bit. Then I cut them out. I sanded the bottom of this piece for the glue to stick better. I'll be adding a wide strip that is about the same size as the thickness of the sword. It should fit pretty snug, but not too snug. Make sure the hole is in line with the center where the handle is. From here, I gauged where the cross guard piece should go, and cut half the thickness from the inside out so it can sit underneath it. I made a complicated little box for the cross guard where the ends will angle inward and the middle is thicker. I also added some scrap pieces in the empty spots so both halves have something to glue to. I glued the two boxes together. Now I'm going to detail the boxes with triangular strips of foam. To make these, I took wide strips of floor mat foam and set my bandsaw table at 45 degrees. Then setting the table back flat and cutting it in half. I made sure to make them small. I made another template to draw on where to glue the strips. I finished one side to show you how small they should be. Some strips need to be cut down or bent to get the shapes right. Once all the details are glued on, I glued the cross guard to the bottom of the sword. I then added extra detail to the cross guard by tracing the template on a sheet of 2mm foam and marked about a quarter inch from the edges and glued them on, cutting off the excess foam and sanding it smooth after. Then I wanted to add some texture details to the cross guard and other box piece. I tested on a scrap piece of foam what Dremel bits I should use, and used this one, this one, these ones, and this one. If you don't have any of these, again, you can use sandpaper or a knife to carve them in. The wire and plastic bristle bits I slowly dragged across, and some I just made a straight line. This will simulate battle scars and scrapes. Even though I mentioned that the blade is super smooth, the cross guard still seemed aged and worn. It is moldy after all. I sealed the surface with the heat gun. Then I worked on the handle. I marked about an inch from the cross guard to wrap hockey tape around the PVC pipe and then glued a strip of foam two inches wide. I then took a layered scrap I cut off from earlier and cut it with my bandsaw, with the table set at 45 degrees. This will be glued at the bottom of the handle, so I measured about 12 inches for a handle and marked it. Then I glued the strip under the line. I made sure to cut off the excess pipe at the bottom of the strip. To make the sword balanced, I am going to take the 12 inch hex bolt and wrap it with tape with an inch of space in between. I wrapped the head of the hex bolt with 2mm foam, then covered the top with more foam. I also covered the piece toward the handle with 2mm foam as well. I did the same to the bottom piece. I had a bit of trouble trying to wrap it with an angular curve, so my trick? I traced a half circle that kinda curved inward. I unfortunately didn't have a template with this, so it's mostly just guesswork. Then I wrapped the outside of the hex bolt again and sanded everything smooth. Before painting, I wrapped the handle with tape and newspaper. I did a layer of plastic dip over everything. When it dried, I taped off the cross guard with more tape and newspaper and sprayed the blade silver. Then I tried mixing some colors together by spraying layer upon layer of different colors. I used red, then dark gray, and back to silver. I did this over and over again to make it look more rusty. I did the same to the cross guard with a base layer of gold, then layering green, brown, and orange. To be honest, I don't think doing this was a good idea. I ended up covering it with a moldy green color in acrylic paint, brushing it on the surface and wiping most of the paint off. Wow, it actually turned out pretty good. This mossy green color. That is almost identical to what I need. That's a little too much fun <laughs> with just painting right now. This is probably my most favorite project. So far. I painted the handle with a dirty, dark, rusty brown color, and dry brushed it with some gold. 
I dry brushed gold on the border of the cross guard and the decorative strips. Using a toothpick, I dipped it in gold paint and painted in the scratches. To finish the sword, I mixed up some paint to make a reddish rust and an orangish rust color. I sprayed the surface of the sword with water, then spread the orange rust down the middle of the blade. Spraying water and painted the red color over the cutting edges at the tip of the blade and lightly spread it toward the middle. When it dried, I was done. This marks another video done by yours truly to show you how to make another great prop. Now that I've showed you guys how to build another giant sword, do some sword fighting! Now don't forget, you can also tweak this build in order to build other swords as well. Big giant swords. Even bigger than this one. Heck, you can even build the giant tree trunk from the game. As always everybody, go ahead and like this video, share it, subscribe! I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you thought about this build. And also if you want to see another prop built by me, Go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Do whatever you want. From a video game, from a movie, from a TV show, anything. And I'll see you guys next month with another tutorial. And we're going to dry brush along the inside and outside portion of this um the part this part of the sword why am i talking with an accent can you tell what accent i have i i i don't know what kind of accent i'm talking with but okay i'm gonna stop talking like that because that seems pretty offensive to some people